Hi, Dr. Nathan Schramm here. I'm an optometrist, certified nutrition specialist, and a fellow of the Scleral Lens Education Society. I'm going to be speaking at the Advanced Refractive Conference in Deer Valley, Utah, August 3rd. And this is about severe corneal opacities in the visual axis, when to recommend a corneal transplant. My financial disclosures, I've been paid and consulted with Excel Contacts and Alden Optical, as well as PRN, Physicians Recommended Nutraceuticals, and I'm a friend of Bill Trattler. By now, most of you guys know about sclerals and uh, what they do. They basically are like a prosthetic for the eye, and they do not touch the cornea. Uh, I'm going to call scleros and mini scleros the same thing, scleros and mini scleros the same thing, so I'm just going to call them all scleros for this lecture, for our purposes of the lecture. And uh, so there's a lake uh, that c creates a cushion of fluid, and the point of a scleral lens is it doesn't touch the cornea. Uh, my first case here, uh, this patient came in, says that he drives with pinhole glasses. Uh, pinhole glasses uh, that get him to 2060. He actually walks around uh, seeing 2400 and 2300 on the left eye. Uh, he is a 42 year old gentleman, had RK surgery back in 93. Uh, through college and medical school, he saw fine, but his vision got worse in his 30s. Uh, by the age of 38, he could no longer use his uh, medical records, and so he hired a scribe. And so the past few years, he's been struggling along, and uh, it came a point that he was having such a hard time with sutures that he figured he had to get something done. We weren't able to improve him with the refraction. This is the uh, ectasia and thinning. You can see that, you know, in some areas we're, you know, in the low 300s. Uh, the topography is, is a mess. There's about nine diopters of, you know, more than that, 12 diopters of astigmatism in both eyes. This is what his eye looks like, um, some heavy RK scars there. And um, his eye is a little bit red in this picture because that was the time that we were treating a uh, viral conjunctivitis. And then we have put him in a 17 millimeter scleral lens. Uh, once again, his eyes a little bit red. Uh, he had just come in from a plane and had slept with them in, so that's not good. You're not supposed to be sleeping with them in. Uh, his, what we're getting him to is 2030 vision in the right and 2040 in the left. So he is super happy. Uh, first thing he went and did was bought himself a race car Maserati. So happy guy there. Uh, we may eventually uh, refit him in an iPrint Pro to correct higher order aberrations because we might be able to still get him a little bit better vision than that. This guy had uh, severe ocular trauma about a year ago and then he had cataract surgery a few months before seeing me. The, cor the cornea specialist wanted to um, uh, delay having a corneal transplant. It, I don't know how you'd feel about transplanting this. You can ask yourself that. Would I want to do a transplant on this? Uh, you can see it's a real shallow anterior chamber and there's a lot of scarring. And um, there's a video here, but it, for some reason it's not playing on my computer. But what I can show you is the scar actually goes out to the white part of the eye. And this is a very difficult scleral lens fit. And he's still not super comfortable with the scleral lens because um, it, it, there's dips and valleys here, and so it, it just isn't uh, a spherical uh, sclera by any means. So we're probably going to do a custom mold to his eye, uh, just similarly do with the dentist office, and then a, a scleral lens can actually be made um, uh, based on that custom mold. So we got him to 2030, uh, so he's happy, and um, that's as happy as he's going to be. Uh, then we're on to the eye print. Uh, what, what was once impossible is now possible. Uh, with the pros or uh, regular scleral lenses, it's just not possible to um, account for all the irregularity that happens in, in a scleral lens with that. But here we have a highly regular eye that's been fit with a scleral lens. That's the same eye. And uh, with these, uh, this particular um, eye print, 
100% of the patients in the recent study were successful with one or two trials, and 65% of them were successful with just the first uh, prosthetic that was fit. So really great. I have no financial um, uh, financial ties with them other than I'm a fitter. Uh, then this guy, he had a transplant in the right eye at the same time as his cataract surgery. He thought that was going to be the case for the left eye, that he'd have a transplant, but a uh, cornea specialist said that he'd rather delay the transplant and let's uh, see what we can do with a scleral lens. Uh, you can see how flat, like it's a plateau, is cornea, and uh, you can even see there the splaying of the uh, RK sutures. So the good thing about sclerals is even though people with RK, their, uh, their corneas fluctuate usually quite a bit during the day, especially with corneas like that, uh, when you have a scleral lens, it, it neutralizes that fluctuation so the vision is stable throughout the whole day. And he's 20-25 in the scleral lens, so he's very happy, and we've been able to delay the corneal transplant so far. This this kid, uh, I call him a kid, but he's like 23 years old. Uh, he was referred to me, but before he was referred to me, this is what his eye looked like. He was seen by Dr. Gulani, who's going to be talking a little bit about uh, one of the procedures he does at this conference. Uh, so pretty heavy scar, a pretty heavy central scar. It was from a pseudomonas uh, soft contact lens infection. And after corneoplastique, this is uh, level 3 corneoplastique, we ended up with still a scar, but um, it's a little bit lighter, the scar. And uh, when we corrected them with glasses, we can only get them to about 2150, pinholes to 2070. But when we fit them in a scleral lens, we're able to get them to 2040 plus. And in case you ever wanted to see what a scleral lens looks like on the eye, uh, at least on the white part of the eye, the sclera, uh, this is where it lands, and we have the superior, and nasal, and temporal, and inferior. And sometimes, um, you know, because of the asymmetry of the sclera, we cannot get um, the same clearance throughout. But um, this is, we did a pretty good job here. And he's very happy, back in school. I just wanted to share a bandaged contact lens. Uh, we discussed this on Caronet at one point, whether you could uh, use a bandaged contact lens as a scleral lens. A uh, scleral lens is a bandaged contact lens. This patient had Sjogren's and Crest syndrome and uh, had an abrasion occur while getting a YAG. And the, they fit her in a 14-0 uh, scleral lens. And because uh, soft lenses were still causing edema and dryness, uh, this is what it looked like on day one. Uh, day one, day three, uh, Dr. Reeder took out the uh, lens and did the staining. There's still a little bit of staining there. By day seven, the sclera was removed in 2025 with glasses. And um, the drops that were used, they put inside the scleral bowl, ocufloxacin, and then had them use it four times a day. At the, after seven days, there was no defect. So take home points of the lecture. Uh, sclerals can be fit uh, to improve vision even with corneal scarring, and they be, may delay or prevent the need for surgical intervention. Highly irregular corneas due to trauma can have an irregular sclera, making iPrint Pro an excellent prosthetic of, of choice. To find a fellow of the Scleral Lens Education Society, uh, you can go to sclerolens.org. Uh, or you can email me, drsjulianate at gmail.com. I actually have a scleral lens fitting group on Facebook, and uh, we it's for scleral lens fitters only, so I'm always happy to help. And I am done.